Duke Nukem 3D is a great game, but you and I already know that. It's one of the reasons I'll probably never do a review of it, because coupled with the fact I know my way around it fairly well, it would probably have a length of about three yards, and it still wouldn't be complete in my eyes. On the other hand, this doesn't mean we can't take a deeper look into how the game works occasionally, or go over some uh, mysteries of it, I suppose, and maybe some of the other build games. There's a few things I'd like to do with Blood, but in the meantime, this is the elevators in Duke Nukem 3D, or more specifically, this broken elevator in Hotel Hell. Now, at first glance, it looks like an elevator. Nothing really extraordinary. It transports you between the two floors. The Nintendo 64 version is no exception. There are some minor alterations to the level geometry, but the elevator's still there and it still works the same. The problem is, if you keep using the elevator, it will eventually malfunction and then just travel forever. It used to be said, in days gone by, that this was an elevator to hell, probably due to the name of the level, and I can see people's point. However, I'm about to ruin the mysticism of it somewhat, because I'm going to show you what happens. That same bug does exist in the original PC version of the game, only it seems to happen less often. I don't actually believe it's any more reliable, so much as people just haven't noticed as much here for whatever reason. Using the elevator repeatedly will cause it to malfunction the same way, and eventually it will fall like the Nintendo 64 version. However, we should have a look at how the elevator works to understand what's going on. Duke Nukem 3D's game logic supports several types of elevator, but to all intents and purposes, they're each just variations of one another, with a single exception the transport elevator. The build engine doesn't support stacking floors directly above one another. You can put sectors in the same X, Y coordinates as one another, or at least they can intercept, but at the end of the day everything is just edges and vertexes on a 2D grid, so placing vertexes in the same place uh, to have a floor above is, well, not something you can really do, or it certainly won't work out very well if you were to try. As such, the elevator doesn't move directly upwards, or it doesn't move the player directly upwards. It's called a transport elevator, and it's the one exception to the rule of how elevators work. A uh, basic rule is if the entrance and exit of both floors is on the same side, it's almost certainly a transport elevator, unless you get into some cocky user maps where people try to be clever. Not that I would ever do a thing like that. What's happening when you use the elevator is that the game logic waits for the elevator's floor to reach the height of the ceiling. If we move the camera outside of the level, we can more clearly see what's going on. There are in fact two identical elevators. When going up, the elevator on the floor waits for the height of the floor to match the height of the ceiling in the next sector, this being the doorway. At which point, all you can see is the inside of the elevator shaft, or at least the wall above the doorway and so the elevator teleports the player. There has to be a little bit of distance before it reaches the next floor, otherwise it would look rather silly and, well, it wouldn't work very well, as we'll find out shortly. At this point, the elevator reaches its destination when the floor reaches the floor height of the doorway upstairs. However, both elevators travel the same distance and they match each other's height constantly. From the inside of the elevator, this teleportation isn't particularly tangible as anything other than a small jolt, which is obviously intentional, you don't want the player to know this is going on, but if we change the colour of the floor, it becomes quite obvious when the teleportation takes place. Interestingly, the player's height, the Z coordinate, seems to be updated before the others when the teleportation occurs. If we go back down, it's much the same, that using the upstairs elevator will send both elevators downwards towards the height of the first floor. This time the teleport will occur when the ceiling height of the upstairs elevator matches the floor height of the doorway upstairs. And then otherwise the logic's basically the same, the elevators continue to travel down until the destination is reached on the first floor. You can see the height readout for the elevators and the player at the top left of the screen. Colouring those floors was very useful here, as now we can see which number refers to which elevator pretty obviously. But Interestingly, if we slow the game logic down to around 1 30th of its normal speed, we can see that the coordinates listed only update every fourth tick. The elevator floor doesn't appear to pay this any attention and moves in between those ticks. There are two possible explanations for this. The first being that the elevator floor does only update every four ticks, 
and that everything in between is just a form of movement interpolation on the elevator floor and ceiling, or else that there's a slight discrepancy in what the game logic does and what the event used to draw those numbers to the screen does. The game loop itself runs at 120 ticks per second, but a lot of logic in the game only runs at 30, a quarter of this, which ties in with the fact that we're only seeing an update to those coordinates every fourth tick of the game loop. You may also notice that as we travel back down in the elevator, the heights don't match when they reach their destination. The upstairs elevator stops early. It doesn't get updated to the same height anymore. It's as if the code which checks this only checks on one elevator the lower elevator in this case. And this is where the problems begin, because every time you send the elevator up and back down, you're going to lose 1,024 units, and they'll drift farther and farther apart. Eventually the lower elevator will reach its destination and stop the code running before the teleportation can occur and you'll find yourself trapped in the upper elevator. Unfortunately, the game doesn't really have any way to check this, and on a subsequent use, We'll assume that as the player is in the upper elevator, they want to travel down, as otherwise the elevator wouldn't be accessible. This causes the downstairs elevator to travel down beyond its destination, although not before teleportation occurs almost instantly, as, well, the conditions for that have now been met, and the elevator will continue to travel, never reaching its destination again. This will go on for a very long time, and the amount of time varies greatly. It seems to depend on what mood the game is in on any given day. The eventual result will be a crash, but in the meantime, some peculiarities happen. Firstly, the textures will start to break. You will get this very strange white noise, at least in this case, but it would look different if there were a different texture on that wall. Going farther down, the movement will get a little bit jerky, as I suspect at such extreme coordinates, the movement code just isn't as accurate. Once you get to utter extremes, the textures may get a little bit shaky for the same kind of reasons. And obviously, the game's going to eventually crash. What's peculiar about crashes on the PC version is it's not a full lockup, it's as if the game's internal timer is stopped. Given the fact that the time it takes to crash varies and the coordinates at which it will happen vary, it's evidently not a wraparound of the player's position that's causing this, and even if it was, I would think a wrap would crush the player as the floor would be the first thing to move when travelling down and would travel up to the maximum height. But regardless of this, you can still access the menu and exit the game gracefully, only the new icons in the menu won't spin, they just won't animate, and attempting to enter another level will cause the game to freeze, again as if the game's internal timer is frozen as the game logic does have to run to start a level. There are certain things that must happen in a level before the loading screen will go away and you're able to play it. Incidentally, one of those tasks is moving transport elevators to their correct starting positions. What's strange about all of this is if we had a way to get out of the elevator, we would actually be able to make it come back if we were to pummel the elevator sector through the doorway. Of course, it, it will never work again once it comes back, but if we had a way to set the floors to the correct height, well, it'd work like it was supposed to. Again, as if nothing had ever gone wrong. Now, we could have skipped this whole process of rattling the elevators apart, as if there was a way to get into the wrong elevator at the wrong time. Well, it'll just cause the bug to go off instantly. As stated, the game doesn't check to see if the elevator's in the right position, it just assumes that as you're using the upstairs elevator, it should travel down, or using the downstairs elevator, it should travel up. Which is far enough, I suppose, as under normal circumstances, you wouldn't be able to gain access to the wrong elevator. But I know what you're thinking, and yes, this will affect any transport elevator in the game. The game code just works this way, and it has this problem. Take this elevator in Spaceport. It has a much larger distance to travel, but that distance will get shorter every time we use it. In this case, it seems to lose a few units going up, and I suspect the reason is that it has nothing to do whether it's an upstairs or downstairs elevator, and it has more to do with which order the sector effector sprites which control them to a degree were placed in the map. It seems the one with the newest sprite will be the one that dictates when the code runs and stops. In Hotel Hell, the lower elevator is the newer elevator, whereas in Spaceport, the upper elevator is newer. At least as far as the sprites go, 
the sectors this isn't so much the case, which is why I believe it's probably the sprites that are causing this. It makes sense because every sprite has its own unique ID, which is stored in an array as far as I'm aware, and well the order they were placed in the map will affect the order in which the game runs code on them, so that would explain what's going on and why it appears to think of a different elevator, it's just execution order just happens to line up that way. Now this elevator is going to take a long time, because to shorten the path enough we're going to have to sit in it for probably at least 10 minutes. Eventually it'll run away. Now if you can get the elevator to run away, it's probably better to have it running away upwards. This one's probably going to be more fun because of that, because we can always send it back again. Unless we leave it long enough to crash the game. However, there's nothing too interesting here. The same thing happens as with Hotel Hell. It's really not that remarkable, and I can't send the camera outside to look at both elevators this time, so, well, we're just not going to see much of anything interesting. Going back to the console versions, this will of course affect the N64 version as well. This elevator is still here in Spaceport, and yes indeed it does work. In fact I'd say this one was scarier than the elevator to hell, cause, well you're getting flushed out into the vacuum of space and watching everything just disappear into total blackness is oddly ominous. The PlayStation version of the game also has this elevator and will suffer from the same bug. The both of these ports are actually ports, they run on the build engine, possibly slightly modified, the Nintendo 64 version certainly has its own rendering code, but the game logic's pretty much the same, and yes, the elevator will break as expected. Some weird things will happen to the textures we can predict. It's as if there's fire in the distance, just this one line, it's a ring of fire. Oh yeah, most elevators have terrible music, this one's got Johnny Cash in it, that's awesome! In the PlayStation version, the ambient sounds from the level will rapidly drift in and out of range, and the gap between this will become shorter and shorter the longer you're in the elevator until it just becomes a bit weird. Now what's peculiar is after about 20 minutes the level will appear to wrap, but with broken floors and ceilings. You'll just get a Hall of Mirror effect on those. If we look at the PC version, well this shouldn't be happening because the coordinates haven't wrapped at all, they're still increasing, or decreasing, depending on which way you're going. And you can't walk out the door, this appears to be a purely visual phenomenon. But imagine the rendering engine is simply wrapping long before the player's actual position does, and that's why it's rendering things there. Whilst I don't know that much about how renderers work, I can speculate that to optimise it they probably kept things as minimal as possible. It probably can't calculate these huge values at all, not like the game logic itself can, and that's maybe why it's happening. Incidentally this won't happen on the N64 version, the game will just crash before it gets to this point, within seconds to be honest. It may be worth noting that none of these bugs will work in the Saturn version. The Saturn version runs on a different engine, it's more of a remake than a port. That game logic likely has its own set of flaws and quirks that I'd be interested to see, but I'm not willing to play with, so if anybody has any of those, well have fun. But for now, well there you go, now you'd know something you never needed to know and probably had no interest in knowing that isn't really particularly useful about Duke Nukem 3D. Seriously, it's not like you can use this to do an awesome speedrun or anything, or can you? Well it turns out you can, because among the things that wrap is the game timer, and if we sit in that elevator on the PlayStation 1 version for around 18 hours, well the frame rate's going to be crap and the texture distortion's going to be far worse. The console's not happy with us, in fact I damaged the video output on mine slightly doing this, you can see the colours have drifted, it got too hot. But we can walk out of the elevator. Duke will be stuck in the floor, or the ceiling, depending on which way you're going, for just a moment as the player's height rapidly chases to the height of the actual level floor and not the wrapped version that you're seeing. Yeah, the elevator actually stopped at a wrapped version of the level. Everything seems normal, of course we can never use the elevator again, but luckily we don't have to go back down there to complete this level. And we'll complete the level with a time of just over a minute, as far as the game's concerned. Yeah, for wraparound. Overall, I'd say that was pretty respectable, given the terrible controls this version of the game has. 
What's peculiar is that this PlayStation version of the game seems to be less prone to crashing, although if you've managed to escape the elevator, peculiar things might happen and you can walk straight through white walls on occasion, which obviously doesn't end well. Overall, I think I'll take the stars next time and maybe not feel so weird about it. Anyway, I'm High Treason, thanks for watching, and I'll see you again next time. And if there's anything about Duke Nukem 3D you want me to perk into in this way, then well, by all means, let me know and maybe I'll take a look at it. I can certainly get around this game fairly well and I can probe into its workings to a reasonable degree. I'm not a programmer or anything, so if it involves going in the source code, I probably can't help you. But yeah, it may be something for a rainy day. I'm certainly not going to complain about having to play this game some more, that's never going to upset me. So, as always, thanks for watching, and remember, don't be a screw up, load DOS 622 up. Well, if you're still here, I'm going to ruin the game for you. There is another tangible effect to the teleportation in the elevator, and that is that the sound cuts off. I'm not entirely certain why, there are a couple of possibilities. Firstly, music and sound effects sprites won't play sounds if they're too far away from the player, and secondly, if there are two sounds the same, the game will prefer the one nearest the player and the second one just won't sound at all. I don't know which, if any, it is in the case of the elevator, but it's very hard to unnotice this once you're aware of it, and there are a few things like that in this game. Nonetheless, my closing words for today are, I couldn't even begin to guess what's happening to cause this one.